Hello and welcome to another calculus review video. This one will be on simplifying trigonometric expressions before you get to those trig derivatives. Um, the first thing is I think let's go over some identities that you should know and remember. The first one being that Pythagorean identity of cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals one. That's one of the most basic identities that you will use very often throughout this course. Um, the next one comes from that identity, and so if I literally take that identity and divide through by cosine squared theta, for example, then I get the second identity, which would be cosine squared over sine squared is 1, Sine squared divided by cosine squared will be the tangent squared, and the reciprocal of the cosine squared is secant squared theta. And so what I can easily see is, again, here's another identity that I don't necessarily have to memorize, it just was derived from that basic Pythagorean. So I could do the same thing, and instead of dividing through by the cosine squared, now I can go through and divide by sine squared of theta. And so I now will get cosine squared divided by sine squared is cotangent squared of theta plus sine squared divided by sine squared is one and reciprocal of sine squared is cosecant squared of theta. And so each of these second two identities comes from just knowing that first most basic, I would say one of the most fundamental identities that we have. Okay, um, some of the other things that we should probably know are just the basic who's who of trig. And so we should definitely know that, for example, secant of theta is reciprocal of cosine theta. We should also know that um, cosecant of theta then would be reciprocal of sine theta. And then the last two I would say um, we should recognize is cotangent of theta and tangent of theta. Now most people know and remember tangent of theta is sine theta over cosine theta. But when I ask many of my students what is cotangent of theta, they just respond with, well, it's one divided by tangent of theta or the reciprocal of tangent. And while that is true, I think most times it's helpful for students to go back to cosine and sine. And so if it truly is the reciprocal of tangent, it will be the reciprocal of sine over cosine, or in other words, cosine theta over sine theta. And I'll give you an opportunity to pause the video and write all these down as you go further um, before we continue on. Okay, so um, what's next? Well, we have our double angle identities that we will use often. So we'll have sine of 2x first. That's the one that just turns into a product, so it's a little bit easier for students to remember. Sine of 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. And this becomes really, really important, especially as we get into the solving um, because what you'll notice is here I have a double angle. That's the argument of the sine function. And it turns it into a single angle. And so now I'm able to actually solve trig or combine some trig functions together, which is extremely helpful. Okay, so um, the other one then would be what about the double angle for cosine or what is cosine of 2x? Well, cosine of 2x starts as the Pythagorean in alphabetical order. So it's just cosine squared x minus sine squared x, and you can use theta instead of x if, if that reminds you it's an angle better. Um, so it's the Pythagorean in order, but if it was a plus, then you would be back up here, sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So this is the difference um, instead of the sum. And so you start with that, and then you can always say, you know, for example, cosine squared, I can take this Pythagorean identity up here, it's the very first one, and I can solve for cosine squared theta by just subtracting the sine squared of theta to the other side. So I could say this is equivalent to 1 minus sine squared x, and I'll copy down this, minus sine squared x, 
So I could also write cosine of 2x as 1 minus 2 of these sine squared x. Now, I do not necessarily memorize this basic cosine of 2x and this one because truly, if I just know this first one, cosine squared x minus sine squared x, I can always use um, the Pythagorean identity to help me out. So, for example, let me do it again. I can also say or, and now instead of replacing cosine squared x, I'll leave that one alone, but instead of the sine squared, I'll replace it with its matching Pythagorean identity because again, if I know sine squared x plus cosine squared x is one, and I want to solve that, for example, for sine squared x, I will just say it's the same thing as one minus cosine squared x, because we're subtracting that to the other side. And so then um, I'll distribute my negative, so that will make that a positive cosine squared x plus a positive cosine squared x would be two cosine squared x and then minus one. And so I can actually write cosine of 2x three ways, um, although I really only, only recognize or know or memorize this first. Um, sine of 2x, however, the double angle for sine only has one, um, so I would definitely know that one. So on this page, I would definitely memorize these green identities that I will put in green highlight right here, and the other ones can be derived using the Pythagorean. I'll let you take a minute, copy these down in your notes, or do what you need to do, and then I will continue on. Okay, hopefully you have all those identities written down. Um, let's say that we were asked to simplify something like this. And again, in calculus, you're going to see it because if we ask you to find the derivative of this, um, there's going to be a lot of negatives involved. You're going to have to use quotient rule. And just to be honest, sometimes students do not have the cotangent, for example, and cosecant derivatives memorized, although they should. But there's a lot of places um, for potential error because this is actually a complex fraction, because cotangent represents a fraction, cosecant represents a fraction, and it's all inside of a fraction. So let's see if we can just make it look a little bit neater first before we get into doing some of the calculus behind this. So um, what I would like to do first is turn this all into sine and cosine, which is usually your most comfortable technique. So for example, I'm going to turn cotangent of theta into its definition here, which is cosine of theta over sine theta, and then all over cosecant theta, which is reciprocal of sine theta, minus sine theta. And it is often helpful, and I will write it, as minus sine of theta over 1. Because now what I can see, and hopefully you can see as well, is that if I multiply the numerator and the denominator by something, um, I will lose that complex fraction idea. So for example, I'm going to multiply by sine of theta over sine of theta. And I line things up so that it is helpful for me. I'm multiplying by one. I'm not changing the value of what I have. I'm just going to change the way it appears. So if I you know, distribute this into numerator and denominator as appropriate, Cosine of theta over sine theta times sine theta. These sure do reduce. That leaves me with cosine of theta. Then in the denominator, again, you have to distribute as appropriate. So I'm distributing here. Um, the reciprocal of sine theta times sine theta will give me a one. And then minus sine times itself will give me sine squared theta. And you think, well, now it just got worse because now I have a quadratic. Well, anytime I have a quadratic, I actually think this might be better because I'm looking for a Pythagorean. And in fact, if you look back at those Pythagoreans, 1 minus sine squared theta is indeed equivalent to cosine squared theta. And then 
cosine over cosine squared would be the reciprocal of cosine, only one would be left over, or you could write that as secant of theta. And so this whole problem just reduced to secant theta. So again, if I were finding the derivative, I would much rather do it of one single nice trig function instead of a quotient where I have to know many derivatives of trig functions. Okay, so looking at this problem, it is similar to the previous one because hopefully you can recognize that you have a binomial in the denominator. And anytime I have that two terms in the denominator, I'm not able to just divide through. I, I could certainly factor and reduce, but there's nothing in the numerator that I can factor. Um, it's one. So what I would do here is see if I could get potentially common denominators because you're adding two fractions together. It might be in your best interest to combine them as one. And so I'll figure out what the lowest common denominator is and hopefully it doesn't take you too, too long to recognize that you need both of those binomials like so. And, you know, normally I say let's not multiply out denominators. The, the only advice I have in multiplying out denominators would be if you think that they're going to turn into something nice. For example, this will turn into a difference of squares, and any time I have a difference of squares in trig, I have a potential of that Pythagorean identity. So you could look at this in a little bit and see if that simplifies further. So we'll come back to that. So I'm going to write this all over my common denominator. And in the first fraction here, I'm going to have to multiply its numerator by the secant x minus tangent x. And the second fraction, and be cautious of the sign in between, because that sometimes will get students if it's a minus, I will have to multiply by the binomial secant x plus tangent x. And so normally I would say go ahead and distribute, um, but in this case obviously you're distributing a one, a positive one in both cases. Um, so I'll go ahead and look at what I have left over. I have secant x plus secant x, which will leave me with two secant x, and then I would have a minus tangent x and a plus tangent x, because again I'm multiplying it by 1, and so those will add to 0. So I just have two secant x. I'm going to copy my denominator, just so you can see this hopefully up here. And this still looks like a pretty bad derivative to take. So if I were, you know, doing this derivative, I still have quite a few steps, and I would argue it does not look any more simplified than the original. But if you multiply out this denominator, so again, helpful that I have written up here LCD, because I can multiply it out, and that becomes secant squared x minus tangent squared x, because those are conjugates, a plus b, a minus b. And so when you multiply conjugates together, you do get the difference of squares. Secant x minus tangent x, if you look back at those Pythagorean identities, your Pythagorean identity was 1 plus tangent squared x equals secant squared x. So hopefully you can understand or see that if you subtract tangent squared x to that side, secant squared x minus tangent squared x is actually just equivalent to 1. So this whole denominator right here is really 1. So this whole thing reduces to 2 secant x. And you don't even have that complex fraction anymore. Much more simple to take the derivative of. Okay, today for our third and final problem, I just want to look at the difference between this problem right here and the two previous. The two previous problems sort of fit the mold of a over b plus c versus a plus b over c.
And again, I'm generalizing here, so you could have subtraction where I have addition and so forth. Um, this first example right here um, in red is where I have a binomial denominator. And so I'm not able to just divide A into those. That is not necessarily correct. You have to do something else. However, in the second example here, I have this monomial denominator, the single term down here. And so that one is equivalent to algebraically A over C plus B over C. Because remember, if you have common denominators, you could just add a cross to get the single fraction that you had to begin with. Okay, so if we know all of that, then hopefully this problem becomes much more simplified uh, very quickly. So I can separate and reduce. And whenever possible, I would highly recommend this before you do derivatives. Let's separate and reduce. So secant theta over secant theta minus tangent theta over secant theta. And so I've separated, and now I'll go ahead and reduce it. Secant theta divided by secant theta is 1. And then I will put the, both of these trig functions in terms of sine and cosine to help me better see what they become. So tangent theta would be cosine theta over sine theta. Excuse me, I just said it backwards reading it. Sine theta over cosine theta is tangent theta. All over secant theta. And secant theta is reciprocal of cosine theta. And so hopefully you can see what's going to happen now is I can multiply by cosine theta over cosine theta, or you could multiply by the reciprocal. Either way, you should see that you get sine theta over 1. And so the original fraction reduces to 1 minus sine theta, which again, once we learn derivatives of trig functions, this will be much, much more friendly and easier to work with. Keep in mind that the messier the trig derivative is, once we move on to later in Chapter 3 and Chapter 4 and begin solving with the trig, um, that's where a lot of students have difficulties. So the more simplistic our derivatives can be, um, the better of a chance we have of getting it correct. I hope you found this video helpful.